Hi, it's John Kelly. In this module, we are going to discuss audit reports, particularly unmodified audit reports. And as always, we want to be efficient and effective, follow professional standards, and document what we have done properly. Now we're going to talk about the standard form of the auditor's report. And it's simple-ish, got to be careful of course, but it's simple. Certainly more complicated if we're going to have a modified audit report. And there is an example of the standard unmodified audit report in the appendix to 700. And 710 through 15 list a series of matters the auditor is to consider and conclude upon before issuing the audit report. And presumably then to document, and a checklist will be helpful here to remind the auditor of all the things that are in those sections. And as I said, the audit report is normally unmodified, better word actually than unqualified. Unmodified is the sort of more modern term. The form of the standard audit report, it's titled the Independent Auditor's Report. It is addressed normally to the shareholders. And then there's a standard form of report. There's then a signature, a date, and dating is complicated and I have a module on that. And the auditor's address, normally just the city address. So you would list the city and the country in which the auditor was in. Now the one thing that I guess you have to watch in the audit report is typos. And grammar aside, the new rule is it's the independent auditor apostrophe S report. A, before this section came out, we would write auditor S apostrophe if it was a firm of auditors, because I guess that's grammatically correct. And we would only go auditor apostrophe S if it was a sole practitioner. And the standard setters, and don't ask me why, have decided that we're all auditor apostrophe S's now. So I don't care. The correct answer is auditor apostrophe S in all reports. So that's something to check in all reports to make sure that we've got that done correctly. The other typo we can get is if we're giving either a one-year or a two-year opinion. And when we're giving a two-year opinion, the auditor's opinion extends to two years, and it has to be very clear that it does that. This is typically for public companies, and the regulators are particularly picky to make sure that the auditor references both years. Now, the standard setters around the world are pretty clear that we pluralize the names. So in a one-year balance sheet, or a one-year audit opinion, in the first paragraph we would talk about the balance sheet we have audited the balance sheet and in a two-year report the standard setters at least are clear that we would say we have audited the balance sheets plural and presumably then in the financial statements the balance sheet would not say the balance sheet it would say the balance sheets and the same thing for the income statement the income statement would become the income statements and so on Though I find when I look at what happens in published public company financial statements, there are almost as many combinations as you can imagine. Many times the auditor will pluralize balance sheets, but when you look at the balance sheet, the client has not. It's just balance sheet. So some of the times the auditors pluralize and so does the client. Some of the times the auditor pluralizes and the client does not and some of the time the auditor doesn't have the extra S and neither does the client. And I guess the position is if you say we have audited the balance sheet as at December 31st this year and as at December 31st last year, you're referencing them both without the S. So while standard setters are clear on the S, practice diverges as widely as you can imagine. Now you will of course refer to the year, so we have examined the balance sheet or audited the balance sheet as at December 31st, X2. And in the two years, you will say as at December 31st, X2 and X1. 
and then you will have to pluralize the year so we say and for the year then ended we will say and for the years then ended and on the statements as well though again there's some divergence in practice because if you say and for the year year ended December 31st 2 and December 31st 1 I guess it says it without the s the one thing that you sort of have no choice in, and, and when I took a look at some published financial statements, adding the S in the responsibility paragraph, say the work done based on our audit, we have to say based on our audits, plural, because we've audited, we've had two audits this year and last year, and we conducted our audits, and that becomes we conducted our audits, plural, and the auditors who had not put an S on the balance sheet all put S's there. The other phrase that's added, and this you got to be careful about, if you're just doing a one-year audit, you say the evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate. And in a two-year audit, you say the evidence we have obtained in our audits is sufficient and appropriate. And that, again, everybody did. And then you have to reference two years in the opinion for, you know, we think the balance sheet as of December 31st is fairly presented and in a two-year opinion, you'd say 2002 and 2001 are fairly presented. So just double check that. I see people that mix the one year and two year. They have some S's on based on our audits or they have in our audits in a one year opinion. So just double check that you've got that lined up correctly. It's kind of embarrassing if you have a typo in the audit report because it's our only product that the client sees. We've done a brilliant, brilliant audit, and then we have a typo in the audit report, and it just makes us look foolish. Now, if you want rather too many examples, there's the, uh, the URL, and this is for Canadian audits. These are examples produced in Canada, but they will apply throughout the world. 12th edition in April 2004, 252 pages of discussing how you write audit reports and how you write two-year audit reports and how you do qualifications to audit reports. So it's rather a daunting document, but boy, it contains just about every possible example you could need. Now, other modifications are complex. Modifications to the audit uh, standard audit report are complex and emphasis of matter and other matter paragraphs are complex, but I will have other modules on those two topics. Now, what makes this 700R is the changes that have occurred. Now, the sections other than those sections that prescribe the report are not much different. They're either exactly the same or similar to the way they were before. The report, however, is lots, lots longer. One of the intentions was to get the opinion to the top, but I guess they realized that if you just said, in our opinion, the financial statements are okay, without having identified what those financial statements were, it wouldn't have made much sense. So the old identification paragraph saying, we've audited the balance sheet and the income statement and the notes, is at the top and then immediately followed by the opinion paragraph. What this is all going to mean is drafting the report is going to be much more complicated and more complicated on an annual basis, more complicated the first time it's done because it's quite a bit different and more complicated on an annual basis. We can only hope that Canada, as they did before, issues probably a much longer than 252 page booklet describing how audit opinions are drafted because it's going to be a lot more complicated. Now the report is similar to the old report except the headings are different. There is a paragraph that includes a statement that the auditor is independent and has followed the relevant ethical standards. Key audit matters will be required, paragraph uh, section 701. Now that depends on the jurisdiction. Different jurisdictions are doing it differently. So you'll have to determine what your jurisdiction is doing. There's a statement that management is responsible for determining whether or not the company is a going concern. Now that kind of implies that the auditor isn't. I like that implication. 
and also an explicit statement that the audit will not always detect material misstatement, which is kind of a disclaimer. And then a much longer description of what the audit is and does, and that can either be in the face of the report or on your website and referred to in the report. But that longer description includes saying that no opinion is provided on internal control, noting that the risk of not finding a material misstatement due to fraud is higher than not finding a material misstatement due to error, which we've already said we might not find, and a statement that future event events may affect going concern. In other words, our evaluation, our management's evaluation and our evaluation of that is based on information we have as at the report date. And if something happens after that, that could affect going concern. And often that is, often companies that become not a going concern, it's an event that occurs long after the auditor was involved and there's nothing the auditor knew or could have done about it. So thanks for listening.